Let me introduce now the session moderator for today, Sasha Page. Uh, Sasha is the principal at IMG Rebel in Washington, D.C. Sasha is a longtime APTA member, and he's a well-renowned expert on innovative funding and financing mechanisms. Sasha, thank you for agreeing to moderate this session, and we're looking forward to you and the panel members uh, informing us about opportunities all across the globe. Thank you so much. So thank you very much for uh, waking up at uh, this hour uh, and attending this session. Uh, we uh, have uh, a group of uh, panelists that uh, we feel are, are highly experienced. We'll share with you some really good insights on uh, their experience with uh, development, uh, with value capture, with real estate, and related planning issues. Um, uh, I think that value capture has become a uh, an area that uh, a number of local agencies, uh, regional agencies, states, and the federal government has an interest in, in terms of using it as a way to help fund a much needed infrastructure. Um, and also, in some instances, also to finance uh, uh, projects. Uh, it can be a, f a financing source, and that's something that we want to explore with, uh, with a panel. Um, in some uh, examples uh, in, in the US, so we've seen that value capture can fund up to one third of the capital costs of major projects. Uh, I think that what's interesting about value capture is it dovetails also with transit oriented development. They're often used interchangeably, although really value capture is a funding mechanism, but, uh, and TOD is a planning uh, approach. But they dovetail a lot, and, and TOD, as you know, is uh, the effort to develop mixed-use, uh, dense, uh, highly amenitized uh, facilities around transit stations and around rail corridors, uh, and uh, is a phenomenon that we see in many, many cities. Um, it also brings challenges, and I hope to talk about that, uh, regarding affordable housing. Uh, also, what you see, uh, to a certain extent, with the whole issue of uh, shared mobility is that these nodes uh, are becoming also areas where shared mobility providers also want to uh, uh, be active. They want to park their bikes, their scooters, and uh, Uber and Lyft want to, want to drop off passengers there. So I think there's a rich uh, area of, of value capture uh, issues that hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about. Uh, so um, very shortly, I'll, I'll, I'll have the uh, panel join the, the stage. Uh, pleased to have uh, two uh, gentlemen from uh, Japan uh, uh, to, to join us, Mr. Yuji Murakami. He's a manager of lifestyle business development, and he'll talk about uh, some of the major projects that, that his uh, company is, is dealing with. Uh, and he's coming, he comes from um, uh, the um, uh, uh, J JR East. Uh, and then um, I'm also ha happy to have Mr. Kantaro Yamaguchi, a manager of, of urban uh, strategy. Uh, from, uh, excuse me, uh, he, he will join us as well, um, and he comes from uh, Tokyo uh, Corporation. We'll also be joined by uh, Heather McKillop. Uh, she is the uh, CFO and Assistant General Manager of the Denver Regional Transportation District, and also a co-chair of the IF2P3, the Innovative Finance uh, and a P P3 Committee, uh, which I'm a member of as well, and hopefully you all will also become members after today's uh, panel. And last but not least is Kevin Desmond from uh, South uh, 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 British Columbia Transportation Authority, also known as TransLink, and he'll be talking about uh, the many projects that uh, his entity is, is involved in. So a couple of uh, ha uh, housekeeping notes. Uh, please turn off your cell phones. Uh, bios uh, are online uh, and also, also on the, on the uh, APTA website. Um, please fill out your session evaluations after this. We really value these to improve uh, presentations. Uh, and the presentations will be online on the APTA um, uh, web website. Um, just to understand a little bit about who's here today, who got up uh, at 8.30 in the morning, uh, I'd like to know if, uh, if you could just raise your hand if you're a member of a or work for a transit agency. If you could raise your hands, great. If you are a manufacturer or supplier, right? Oh, those guys were, and a consultant and, and contractor. Great, excellent. And as I said, um, uh, who is a member of the I2FP3 uh, committee? Good, great. 
Good. Without further ado, I'd like to ask uh, the uh, uh, presenters and the uh, speakers to join me uh, on, the, uh, on, on the stage here. So why don't you sit in order? So you'll... Uh, yeah, click here. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, so I just sit at the end. Yeah. Okay, would you please start? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am uh, Yuji Murakami from the East Japan Railway, and I'm with the Life Business Development Headquarters. Thank you for inviting me to speak at this uh, seminar today. So when I talk about the Lifestyle Business Development Headquarters, I'd like to touch on the overview, first of all. Before going into the content, I'd like to uh, define what it means to say the Lifestyle Business Development. So uh, we offer services and also businesses that create, uh, that create transit hubs with surrounding business that improve lifestyles of those who live or visit those areas. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that uh, you have the clear definition of our lifestyle business development headquarters. So this is the agenda for today. At the beginning, I'd like to talk about the uh, overview of our company and then also lifestyle service business. And then the second part will be our development projects and then also the Shinagawa development project that I am a part of. First of all, I'd like to show a background information of our company. JR East was established uh, back in 1987 when the former National Railway was split and also privatized into six passenger railways, which was shown on the map. So our company is called JR East, and this is colored in green on the slide. And as you can see, our service includes uh, the Tokyo metropolitan area. We have a railway network of about uh, 7,500 kilometers and 1,700 stations. And for about uh, 170,000 uh, passengers use our railway daily. Next slide shows our uh, operating revenue. Total revenue is about uh, 27 billion US dollars. 70% uh, comes from real business. 30% comes from non-real business. So around the time while we were privatized, around that time, 90% uh, of our revenue came from only from uh, railway business. Over the 30 years of our recent history, uh, we have increased our capacity and also revenue uh, from non-rail businesses. And this is our organization. So these parts shown in red uh, is life, uh, lifestyle business, uh, which is I'm part of. We have some group subsidiaries to develop and also deploy businesses surrounding the station areas. At our departments, we recruit personnel uh, who are experts and also maybe new to this uh, lifestyle services, but uh, we uh, give them training uh, for our specific purposes. Uh, these are major fields of a uh, lifestyle business department. Our department operates several kinds of businesses such as retails, restaurants, shopping centers, and also hotels and offices. And uh, inside of the train cars, we provide advertising as well. 
And this is not only focusing on Tokyo, uh, but at the same time, we deploy these businesses at local or remote areas uh, near to the Tokyo area. I would like to show you uh, these pictures that uh, we are expanding our no-rail business opportunities. Uh, next page shows vision. So far, we have been focusing on the development of the stations and also railway systems. However, we're looking into the future. We have a, a goal that uh, we set the slogan of this campaign. Uh, that uh, we can develop more uh, surrounding the station so that we have more enriched uh, lifestyles surrounding our lines. Uh, so when we talk about the uh, uh, goals, uh, we are hoping to increase the, the operating revenue lifestyle businesses about 1.5 times of that earned in fiscal year 2016 by 20, 20, 2026. So this is an example of a developmental project. So we have a range of stations from the Tokyo area to regional areas, uh, so including Tokyo Station and also other uh, terminal hub stations. And then so we do provide a developmental project to these areas. And in regional areas, we cooperate uh, with local governments, universities, and also companies uh, so that uh, we can leverage the attraction uh, in that particular area. I'd like to show you an example, uh, including uh, the Tokyo Station. Tokyo Station itself has an over 100 years of history. And that we have completed some restoration work uh, by 2016. And at that time, uh, we uh, transferred some of the functions to the surrounding areas uh, out of the uh, Tokyo station. And so this was used as a value capture scheme as well. Now, um, I'd like to uh, share with you the Shinagawa Development Project, uh, which I am part of. I've, I please refer to the handout I already distributed to you. Uh, as for the location of Shinagawa, uh, Shinagawa is uh, very uh, convenient, only 11 minutes from Haneda Airport, and uh, you can uh, go to uh, the, the Kyoto uh, by Shinkansen. And in future, uh, the, uh, if uh, the maglev, uh, the Shinkansen, is developed, it is going to be the terminal uh, for that operation. And the north part of uh, the Shinagawa station, there exists that huge train yard. That is the area where we are going to uh, develop. Uh, first, uh, uh, we are going to uh, uh, reorganize uh, the train. Uh, this yard is going to be uh, reduced in half in size, and we are going to relocate existing uh, the tracks. And then we uh, create new uh, station, and the remaining 13 hectares uh, will be available uh, for development. Uh, this uh, shows the road map. And the new uh, the station will be uh, the, uh, uh, completed in 2020. And then block one to block four uh, that will be uh, the developed by 2014. And then uh, the block five and six uh, that will be developed by 2030. Let me talk about uh, the TOD. Uh, first, uh, the, the, the improved uh, transit system. And then second is to uh, the provide uh, the, the provide uh, the easiness uh, the, to uh, the passengers. Uh, the first, uh, the Takanawa, uh, the gateway, uh, the station. This is the new station uh, will be established. And then the very famous architect is going to uh, the design this station. So it is going to be the symbol of this area. N next, uh, the, we are going to have uh, the 
a pedestrian at square oh. and then also at a transit at the square where uh, you can transfer uh, from uh, the train uh, to buses and taxis. And then uh, the, there will be uh, the parks and the greeneries. Uh, so that and then uh, the, those uh, the area and then places uh, that will be uh, the connected by pedestrian network. So uh, this uh, shows uh, the uh, the multi uh, the, the the purpose urban uh, complexes, and then uh, the, all the buildings uh, that will uh, them have uh, the residence offices and the convention uh, the centers. And the left hand side uh, that there will be uh, the residential uh, the area, international school, and then uh, the parks. So. Uh, we are uh, try this is uh, the there is a need to uh, the redevelop the integrated way uh, the station and uh, the, uh, the the city and then this is the new uh, the undertaking for uh, the JR uh, the east thank you very much Make sure that people, if they are listening, um, turn to channel one on your, um, your boxes here if you want to, to, to listen in, in, in English. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm uh, Kantaro Yamaguchi from Tokyo Corporation. Uh, I'm very glad to have this opportunity. Uh, please listen to uh, translation. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'd like to show you the uh, overview of our cooperation. And I think that our focus today is uh, regarding TOD. And at the end, I'd like to show you some examples of our developmental projects. So this is our uh, company, uh, Tokyo Corporation. Our uh, origin comes from a theory, actually. Uh, the theory is called the Garden City Theory by Ebenezer uh, Howard. And then so this company, Tokyo, wanted to apply this particular theory into the Tokyo metropolitan area. Uh, meaning that uh, uh, the development should happen uh, surrounding the railway systems uh, so that uh, rich and an also diversified uh, neighborhood can develop surrounding those lines. And 100 years later, so this is our current Tokyo uh, lines uh, mapping as shown on the slide. And so I wanted to show you uh, in relation to the Japanese map and then also Tokyo map. And uh, in this uh, area, our, the population is around uh, 500, uh, 5 million people, excuse me. And so in comparison to London, two thirds of London population lives in one third of the area of London. And then especially in this area, uh, we attract a wealthy uh, population and the average household income in this area is significantly higher than the rest of the country. And so I'd like to show you what kind of businesses we operate in this Tokyo metropolitan area. And so qualitatively, we offer functions necessary to urban dwellers uh, for their work, mobility, and also leisures. And also, uh, we are looking uh, to add more to the values as well. Uh, quantitatively, uh, I'd like to show you these pie charts. Uh, I belong to the real estate division. As a share of the profit, uh, this is quite high for comparing to the other uh, transit organizations. And the red part shows the transit opportunities. And so this profit rate is actually more than 10%, uh, meaning that uh, transport business itself is already profitable. So I'd like to tie this into uh, TOD and also what kind of businesses we have. So I'd like to show you uh, the uh, some of the assumptions. So we talked about uh, the population and also the uh, ridership. This uh, business environment is quite unique. And then when we talk about uh, our uh, Shibuya uh, terminal, and then you can see the high usage and also the uh, uh, 
high ridership here, and uh, Tokyo's uh, Tokyo's ridership and also users of the uh, Shibuya terminal both exceed three million daily and also 1.1 billion annually. And then also you can see that slide in that 17 stations uh, that occupy out of 20. And so to put it in a, a simpler term. Uh, so when you think of a, a business executive who makes more than $150,000 annually, they still uh, choose to uh, stay on the train to commute. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, the healthy surplus comes from the railway business. We receive positive impact to non-rail businesses. Uh, so when we talk about our uh, real estate business, I'd like to call your attention to this slide. This is an excerpt from our strategy provided to investors and also analysts. Uh, uh, this was made about 10 years ago, uh, which was right after the Lehman shock. And this uh, states that uh, real estate business should reflect current and future functions needed by urban dwellers to cre create uh, lasting attract uh, neighborhoods and also another key is to attract external investments to create values for the whole town, thus increasing the real estate values entirely. And so this is a successful cycle from the profitable businesses. Well, the, the, we're talking about uh, the urban development along Tokyo Line. I would like to show you two examples. Uh, this is this shows a train line map, and I uh, would would like to talk about uh, the Shibuya and uh, the Futako Tamaga, which is uh, the, the, the suburban area. Uh, first, Futako Tamagawa. This is uh, the this uh, the development is uh, completed in 2015, and the total uh, the area is 11 hectare, largest development uh, the but uh, in in Tokyo area. And then in this area, originally, uh, the, it was a residential area. Uh, however, we added the functions of a play and the work and, and try to attract uh, the families with growing children and uh, those who are in creative industry. The easy, uh, the good school system, and then uh, the very uh, comfortable living environment. Uh, the effect or the impact of uh, this inver inver uh, the development and quantitatively at uh, a property value at uh, a profit and train traffic all increased as a result of this redevelopment. Uh, uh, lastly, that I would like to talk about Shibuya. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know whether either you know this scramble intersection. Uh, 2016, at the at the time of uh, the closing ceremony of Rio Olympic, uh, that this video was shown, uh, and uh, we would uh, like to promote uh, this area as one of the symbols of Tokyo, and then we are making efforts together with Tokyo Metropolitan Politan government, that this is the uh, the picture of uh, the end of the uh, countdown uh, ceremony or event, and, and I personally was in charge of this. Uh, there are so many people uh, gathered uh, there uh, on the, the New Year's Eve. To uh, Shibuya Station was established uh, more than 100 years ago and kept growing in size. Now. Uh, there are four different, uh, there are 11, uh, the nine uh, train lines uh, operated by four different uh, the companies. And then uh, the, there are 1.1 uh, billion uh, the people using this station annually. So, and then due to congestion, we decided to de develop. And this is uh, the, uh, the how it looked like uh, the after the completion of redevelopment. Half of it will be completed by the end of this year. Uh, uh, this is the bird eye view uh, from the building which will be completed by the end of your year uh, to uh, the scramble, uh, the intersection. I very much uh, would like you to come and take a look at this other uh, place if you have opportunity to come to Tokyo for uh, the Tokyo Olympics.
And um, in Toronto, I understand that the efforts are being made to create innovation ecosystem focusing on artificial intelligence. As uh, redevelopment project progresses, Shibuya, with high diversity and inclusiveness, is expected to become the innovation district as we see creation of community for exchange and creativity. A challenge is, uh, for us is how to manage this uh, the area once redevelopment is uh, completed. And I think this develop, redevelopment effort uh, will help increase the value of this area. Thank you very much.